This problem involves a block of weight w with the dimensions b times h. And the task is to move the block along a rough floor. And to do that, we use a force p. The force p can be applied at an angle theta. And our task is to determine the optimal choice of theta. A natural choice would be theta equal to zero. We simply push the block. On the other hand, in this problem, we will show that this is not an optimal choice. And an optimal choice is dependent on the coefficient of friction mu between the block and the floor. In addition, I would like to identify the dimensions of the box so that when it is pushed, it is gliding rather than lifting. I will begin with the free body diagram, which involves the applied force P, the weight, the friction force, and the normal force, and the corresponding equilibrium equations involve force, equilibrium equations, but no moment equilibrium equations. The reason I don't want to write the moment equilibrium equation at this stage is very simple. I do not know the location of the force M along the interface. And so, for example, if I take this point as the pivot for the moment equilibrium equation, I will need to know the distance between the point and the normal force and uh, in effect what will happen is I will write an additional equation but I will introduce an additional unknown. In addition to the force equilibrium equations we write the condition for impending motion and these three equations can be solved by expressing F and N from the equilibrium equations in terms of P, W and theta and then combining it with the impending motion condition so that we obtain the expression for the force P in terms of prescribed mu W and theta. Theta is to be determined from the optimality condition by minimizing p. To this end, all we have to do is to find the derivative of p, and it is given here, and set it equal to zero, and then we see that the derivative is equal to zero when mu is equal to tangent theta, which gives us that theta must be equal to arctan mu, and if I substitute this theta back into the expression for p and simplify it, I will obtain the following simple expression. I thoroughly recommend you to go through this exercise and confirm that this expression is correct. Now, for p being determined, I can address the second part of the problem. And in this part, I would like to identify H so that the block glides rather than lifts. To this end, I will draw the free body diagram, which involves the forces that have been already determined. The friction force, the normal force, and P are all now related to W and mu. And the key part of this diagram is that it reflects the critical condition when the block transits from a gliding motion to a lifting motion. In the pure gliding motion, the normal force 
is somewhere along the interface. In the transition stage, the gliding force moves all the way to the right, to the point B. And the reason this happens is because when the block lifts, it is associated with a small rotation about the point B. So the contact between the block and the floor is reduced to a point contact rather than a line contact. At any rate, what this gives us is the location of the normal force. And now if I write down the moment equation, and I will do this using A as the pivot so that I don't have to deal with this inclined force, I obtain the condition that engages B and H and W is cancelled out and I obtain the expression for H in terms of mu and B. I want to pay your attention that if mu is negligible, it means H becomes infinite. What this means is that gliding is very easy and you do not tip the block. In contrast, if gliding is hard, meaning there is large friction, the block is more likely to tip. Thank you.